In 2011, at the Miami Boat Show, Seven Marine shocked the marine industry with the launch of a 557-horsepower supercharged V8 outboard. Six years later, in 2017, Volvo Penta, one of the largest players in the marine propulsion industry, purchased a controlling share in Seven Marine and bet that it would be a key component in the future of boating technology. Less than three years later, Volvo stopped the sales and production of all Seven Marine engines and shuttered the company. What the heck happened? There are a lot of theories out there. Life Offshore blames Biden for some reason, and Vizio Racer believes Volvo's press release would state that they just desire to lower their carbon footprint or some other altruistic nonsense. But I don't think any of that's true. Let's, let's dig in a little deeper. In the early 2000s, an employee of Mercury Marine named Rick Davis quit and started a small company that would have a huge impact on marine history. What Rick wound up doing was using an off-the-shelf engine from the automotive segment because automotive engines were more powerful than outboard engines at the time. The main challenge was the crankshafts on automotive engines tend to be horizontal, whereas dedicated outboard engine designs to be vertical, which packages a lot more effectively in an outboard. To solve this, Rick wound up setting the Monster V8 on top of an off-the-shelf, already developed transmission from ZF. This transmission converted the power from the horizontal crank to twin vertical drive shafts used in a pod drive, which was also an off-the-shelf unit from Selva. At the end of the day, Seven Marine was a company that basically reconfigured existing off-the-shelf components into something that resembled an outboard, but the only thing they actually did in the factory was paint the cowls and assemble the components. Let's stop here a minute. To review, Seven Marine didn't make the power plant, they bought it from GM. They didn't make the transmission, they bought that from ZF. They didn't make the gear case, they bought that from Selva. And Volvo? Volvo saw the market for large horsepower outboards and knew it was profitable and bought Seven Marine in 2017 because at the time, they were at the top of the food chain in the outboard world. However, if you've ever been involved in product development, every time you're using a part from a supplier instead of you know vertically integrating the production of those parts within your own company, you're leaving a lot of profit at the table. It's also leaving you completely vulnerable to price hikes from the suppliers of these key components that you have to use to build your product and puts you at risk from companies that can produce everything in-house. Less than three years after purchasing Seven Marine, in November of 2020, Volvo Penta surprised everyone with an announcement that they would be stopping production of all Seven Marine outboards and claims it was because they were dedicated to becoming carbon neutral and talked about emissions and the environment, but I don't believe any of them for one second. I think the real reason was that they found out what Mercury was up to and realized they were totally and completely screwed. Less than six months later, Mercury Marine announced the largest outboard they've ever produced with a 600 horsepower 7.6 liter vertically oriented V12 with a two-speed automatic transmission and steerable gear case. Unlike 7 Marine, Mercury didn't start with off-the-shelf components. Everything was designed from the ground up to become this absolute monster of an outboard, and they produced both the engine and gear case in-house, which gives them a huge financial advantage over 7 Marine. In terms of performance, I haven't seen any direct comparisons, but the power and weight of both of these outboards is relatively similar. But Mercury's two-speed automatic transmission would give it a huge advantage in both whole shot and acceleration, as well as improving efficiency. They're claiming a 20% improvement in fuel economy at cruising speed compared to 7 Marine. That's a huge selling point, as boats of this caliber can have fuel tanks of over 600 gallons. Service and maintenance of these engines is another huge advantage for Mercury, as they have a global parts distribution network and dealers and repair facilities scattered all over the place. If your 7 Marine outboard needs some work done, I'm not even sure where you would start. Lastly, price. The 7 Marine 627 cost around $100,000, while the V12 Mercury was $23,000 cheaper at launch, starting at around $77,000. Volvo can claim that they dropped 7 Marine for environmental reasons, but the writing was on the wall. The V12 Merc outboard outclassed it in terms of performance, efficiency, service, and it was $23,000 cheaper. This means that their entire business model was gone. They can't lower the prices as they don't produce any of their components, and Volvo knew they were screwed. Volvo Penta didn't cancel Seven Marine because of a political puppet, and they didn't do it to save the environment. They found out that Mercury was working on a product that completely outclassed them in every single way, and they had no more business case, so they gave up, pulled the plug, and cut their losses. Mercury Marine's V12 outboard is what killed Seven Marine. Agree? Disagree? Leave a comment. Love to hear from you. Cheers, dudes. Till next time.